Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to do an unboxing and initial impressions of the Huawei P9. This is the successor of the Mate 8 from earlier this year and one of the tricks that this device has up its sleeve is that it has a dual camera setup on the back with Leica design which gives us the ability to have one RGB and one grayscale monochrome camera that gives us the ability to have better camera exposure, uh, setup and just a much better experience using our device for taking pictures and videos. So we're going to definitely check that out but I don't want to say thank you very much to Huawei for allowing me to review this device and let's go ahead and check it out. Starting off with the box, we have Huawei P9, that's pretty much it, designed by Huawei, of course, Leica dual cameras, um, just a Huawei design here and another logo, nothing on the left, on the right, just the information as far as the you know, IMEI and so on. And this is just a soy-based packaging for con you know, conserving the environment, of course, and made in China technologies. So let's go ahead and open it up. And here we are greeted with the device. This is a review unit, so just be aware that some of the things that come here uh, are slightly different. Uh, and I'll go ahead and put this box away. Taking a look at the device, we have a 5.2 inch 1080p display on the front, an 8 megapixel camera front facing the earpiece, piece, and we don't have any buttons here as these, this device has on-screen buttons. So we'll get into that once we turn it on. Turning on the right side, we have a power button, a volume rocker, no additional button. It is a metal construction design, so you'll notice very nice and very steady. Um, and then going to the back, we have the dual tone, dual, not dual tone, dual camera setup, 12 megapixels. These are the Leica designed uh, cameras. One of them are monochrome, one of them RGB, dual tone flash, laser autofocusing, and the fingerprint sensor. And of course, some information as far as this, don't, don't dispose of it in the trash, the Huawei name, um, and pretty much not that much here. The uh, SIM slot on the right side here, on the, well, it's the left side at this point, uh, it double doubles as dual SIMs or a, sim, a single SIM with an SD card expansion slot. So we have the ability of expanding our memory on this unit. This one does come with 32 gig built in with three gigs of RAM. There is another version that comes with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs, uh, but that's a different version of it. At the top, we have a microphone and then going to the bottom, we pretty much set with the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, an additional microphone, the USB type C connector with quick charge support, as well as the speaker. It's a single firing speaker at the bottom. Uh, the one thing I wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of, the main design elements here are very nice. Uh, now, if you've seen the Mate 8, and I've had this device since actually February, since January of this year from CES, uh, this is kind of the successor to it in a way because they're using both the same architecture as far as CPUs. The Mate 8 is using the Kirin 950 processor and the, uh, the P9 is using the Kirin 955. Very much, pretty much the same lineage. Both have three gigs of RAM, both have 32 gigs of RAM, uh, onboard storage, both have quick charge. And the main reason why I really like these devices, it's the performance of these CPUs. They really outperform almost any other CPU I've used as far as consistency, throughput, and just sheer performance. And of course, the Mate 8 for me is very, very nice and it has a, one of the best fingerprint sensors on the market. You could just basically unlock the device almost instantaneously. But let's go ahead and power up the P9 and then we'll give it a second as it's going on through its first boot. And I'll put it on the side. Uh, checking out the content of the box, we have an international charger. Unfortunately, this will not work here in the US, uh, but it is compatible. Now let's actually look at the voltage. Uh, overall, it's at 5 volt. There we are. It's 5 volts at 2 amps, and that's the technology that's built into it. So you use this to charge your device. Um, and it is booting up the EM, e Emotion UI 3, uh, I think it's 4 on that one. And then in this box, we have the USB Type-C cable that you'd use with the charger as well as a pair of headphones. Very nice, and it looks like inline headphones with microphone built in. Going through the main parts of the UI, we have Google Play services installed here. We have a folder, oh, we'll go ahead and open it up. Two sections, all the uh, different applications pre-installed. Of course, we have the Google Play Store, settings, camera. Uh, we have Chrome as the default browser right here. On the right side, you have a few apps, uh, only basically Office and Iron. I am, I'm not sure what that means. I'll we'll check that out in a little bit. Some tools here, flashlight, recorder, mirror, uh, just different things. And then we have the updater here to be able to update the UI. Um, heart, this is the health application built in as this device will also track your steps. So as it has a built in, I guess, pedometer. Uh, speed test, I downloaded to be able to basically check the speed, uh, gallery, themes, and we do have the ability of changing themes. We have the default one installed here, and then we can download some more. The other thing is we have a music application. We'll go ahead and turn it on. It says you have enable settings. We want to be able to see it. Uh, let's say local songs. And of course, uh, it has the built-in song that most Huawei phones will have. And we'll dream, it 
And it also has the lyrics, which is very nice. Very good. So far, it sounds pretty good, actually. Overall, we'll go back home. Uh, going looking through the UI, uh, we have two different sections here. So if we swipe from the right, we go down to shortcuts. If we swipe from the left, we go down to notifications, but we're also able to swipe between the two. Uh, and what we have here is that all our notifications are on the left side, the step counter, the clock, the weather, the date, and as far as basically Google Now, if you're logged in. Uh, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, settings, settings, um, of course, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, airplane mode, and then the toggle here. Uh, shortcuts, you can go to settings. Here we get into the main parts of the UI. So it's categorized and we have a search option at the top. Uh, all the normal stuff at the top for radios are at the top section. Home configurations in the middle, home screen notification. You can also customize the notification panel. This is where you'll be able to do the drag option if you swipe from the right, swipe from the bottom, and it changes it for you. Uh, battery percentage, we have it in the battery. We can change those things. It has a lot of customizations. Display, we can customize the font size, uh, the daydream mode, indicator light, it's the uh, LED that's located to the right side of the earpiece. Um, doesn't show it there, but this is basically where it's gonna come up. Uh, configured sleep mode. You can configure your, sorry, your fingerprint sensor, your screen lock password uh, option, smart assistance, this is for motion control, one-handed mode, voice uh, voice control. The navigation bar can be customized. We have three buttons right now, but we can of course add one more to open the notification shade. Um, and then we can go back. You can customize it of course to, to your liking. Glove mode. Um, and then we have um, accounts, Google accounts, of course, if you add an account, application management here. Additional settings will give us more customizations as far as memory storage, um, you know, battery usage, security, location access, printing, accessibility, mirror, mirror share, which is, I think, is their form of uh, casting from the device, backup and reset. Uh, we have the updater. I've turned on developer options, mostly just for curiosity purposes. Um, and then we have USB debugging that we can turn on from here. We can restore defaults. Uh, the updater, currently it's running version 4.1 for the UI. So this is EMUI 4.1. And I think, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's running over uh, Android M. So build number, here it is, yeah, Android 6.0, not 6.01. Emotion UI 4.1, that's the IMEI, CPU, 3 gigs of RAM, of course. We have the Kirin 955 processor in here, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gig of internal storage with 21 gigs available, 1080p display, and the last security patch that was installed on here is March 1st. Uh, and then band and kernel status and all that good stuff. Very nice, simple UI, very easy to interface with. Uh, the camera is very good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check it out for you guys. Obviously, this is the main benefit of having uh, uh, basically the, the optics being designed by Leica, which uh, as opposed to Zeiss with some of the other devices, let's say the, uh, the Lumia devices, Leica is one of the other competitors on the market. Uh, we have the ability of going in and switching to the front camera. I'll say hi. How are you guys doing? And um, we have the ability of going in with filters. This is different filters that we're able to apply. Uh, we'll go back to original. Uh, we have the ability of doing focus shift, which gives us that nice bokeh effect. Uh, we'll go ahead and tilt it to the side. And the easy way to explain it is, uh, you can basically focus on an, on an item and it'll give you the ability of focusing it. You can open it up. This is me dropping it to F1.95 on it. And I'll go ahead and take a picture. And then when we go into the picture itself, uh, it gives us the ability of shifting the, the focus, but you can already see here in the picture that the effect here is a very nice softening effect, but we can go back into the picture and then let's say, uh, I wanna shift the focus a little bit lower here, and then I can keep it at this, at this level. And essentially all it's doing is applying a filter that shifts the bokeh effect. And it's very, very nice. And you can zoom in and see the text is very clear. Uh, going back to the other settings here, we'll go back out of this. We have the ability of controlling flash, turning it on, off, you know, nothing big and go back into landscape mode. Uh, if we swipe from the left, we have the different modes. So we, by default, are using the RGB sensor. And then if we wanna switch over to the monochrome sensor, this is how you turn it on by itself, as opposed to having it assisting the RGB sensor to take better pictures. We have beauty, video, HDR, of course. Um, we have ability of going into beauty video, panorama, night shot is very, very nice for taking night shots, but I would recommend you using it with a tripod. Light painting is if you do the same thing with night shot, except now it's gonna track a light source and it gives you ability to do light paint. It's really nice, very cool effect. Uh, Time-lapse, slow-mo, watermark, um, audio note, as well as document address, readjustment, which means if you're taking pictures of, pic of documents on a PowerPoint presentation, it will realign it and make it very you know, straight for you. And then, well, let's go ahead and switch back to the RGB sensor. Uh, on the right side, we have the ability of changing the resolution, 12 megapixels, 4.3, we're actually right now, GPS, uh, film mode, aggressive grid, uh, sorry, assistive grid, uh, mute, timer, audio control, of course, touch to capture, capture a smile, all the good things. And then of course you can reset the default here. Looks very promising. I'm gonna be testing this very much. Let's go and do a quick sample of the front facing camera and the back facing camera. 
So this is a quick front-facing camera um, setup. This is an 8-megapixel front-facing camera uh, on the front. Um, just want to see how it looks, how it uh, works pretty good. I'm going to do a real quick sample as well of the back-facing camera. So I went ahead and switched back to the back camera. Hopefully I'm centered and I, it's okay. Uh, again, this is just a quick sample just to show you guys the back-facing sensor and how it looks on the P9. Uh, I'm not sure if it's using the monochrome sensor at this point. I think it's mostly just using the RGB for video, but again, promising to be a good camera. So as far as the build, the hardware, the software, it's a really good experience. I'm gonna check it out, test it out, make sure to give you guys as much possible coverage as far as the camera, the performance, the media consumption, battery life, um, all the different things that you'd expect from a normal flagship, or not only that, just a normal device. Uh, very happy to see that it's basically just a step up from what we had with the Mate 8. And I say that mostly because it's more form factor friendly. Uh, it's a smaller 5.2 inch display. You can definitely reach the top and the bottom without having to worry about it. Um, you have a really good display. Uh, we have, you know, the sound so far sounded pretty good when I was playing that song. Um, we have an LED display, uh, LED light, 8 megapixel front facing, 12 megapixel dual cameras in the back uh, with dual tone LED. It's just promising to have a lot of really good potential and hopefully it works really good. The one thing I want to mention to you guys, this is an international model. So unfortunately in the US, we're only going to be getting HSPA plus, which for the most part is not a bad thing. To clarify, this is the standard P9, not the P9 Lite or the P9 Plus. There's two additional versions that were released recently after this was released. This is the 5.2 inch and I think it's a really nice just that's the right size for your hands. Uh, you're able to reach to the other side as far as your thumb and then control things. You can configure the fingerprint sensor and use it. And if it's anything like the Mate 8, it's gonna be ridiculously fast. So I'm gonna spend some time with it. I'm gonna use this obviously to be able to give you guys my honest opinion of it. I'm gonna be testing that camera tremendously. I'm gonna do a lot of things. So please check out my socials, either Instagram, uh, of course, Twitter or on YouTube as well. I'll do a video for this. Uh, but the intention here is I wanna check it out. I wanna say thank you very much for Huawei for allowing me to check out this device. Uh, it's very exciting. Exciting. And again, a very big fan of the way the implementation is there. Um, as far as the UI, if you're not happy or if you're not comfortable with the Emotion UI, the way it's set up, uh, it's very easy. This is Android. Just install Nova Launcher, change it, and you can use it. Uh, the settings, of course, within the notification shade as well as, well as the settings don't change, but at least the interface with the app drawer, uh, that's fixable. Anything, And that's one of the main things. A lot of people worry about these things. Don't concern yourself. Just install it and do it. Thank you very much for the support. Again, uh, let me know in the comments below if there are some things that you're looking for directly for the P9. Um, other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. Initial thing, it says let's get started. This is swipe left for widgets. So we'll go ahead and swipe to the left. Front facing camera. Fingerprint sensor is at the bottom. And again, this isn't a button, it's 